Now moving forward, we have a record button here. So to arm Pro Tools for recording, you simply hit the record button and then hit play. And as you can see, we're now recording. The other way to record in Pro Tools, and this is one of the most important commands, is command spacebar. And then hit spacebar to stop the recording. Now we have a few different recording modes we need to go over. So if we right click, we have normal, loop recording. So if I make a selection, it's going to keep looping that selection and recording over and over again. Now, if you want to loop the recording and store all those loop takes, you need to go to your Pro Tools preferences. And then right here under operation, automatically create new playlists when loop recording. So now if we do that again, you can see that we've stored those takes away. We'll go over playlists and storing takes away later, but this just gives you an idea. Destructive record will rewrite over your regions and permanently delete that file. So instead of creating multiple files, this will literally rewrite permanently over your file. I never turn this on, but if you did need to save on disk space, you could turn on this option, though I don't recommend it. And then last but not least, one of the most important recording modes is quick punch mode. You can also toggle this on by command shift P. Punch recording has a lot of powerful features to it. All right, so to demonstrate punch mode, I'm gonna use a duplicate channel of my microphone that you won't hear. So I'm going to hit play, and then I'm gonna hit command space bar when I wanna punch in or start recording. And as you can see, there's the audio, I punched in, everything's good. Now what's also really amazing about punch recording is it actually arms your track with a secondary voice, meaning there's almost like a secret record track happening in the background, and I'll demonstrate and explain this. So let's do that one more time. I'm gonna punch in my audio real quick. Now you can see I'm recording, check one, two, there we go. Now, let's say that the artist was doing something interesting before they punched in, something before the actual recording time. If you were in a normal recording mode, you wouldn't have captured that, it would be gone. But in punch mode, when you're playing the audio, you are secretly recording it at the same time. So notice that if I go here and drag out the audio, there was the audio of me talking before the recording started. So this is so incredibly useful, especially if somebody does something really cool and you didn't capture it, in punch mode, you actually did. All right, now let's talk about pre-roll, post-roll, and fade-in, which also are great complements to punch and recording. So pre-roll, very simply put, pre-roll is simply the amount you play before the recording punch-in point. So as you can see here, as soon as I turn this on, we get this little yellow flag. And wherever I move this yellow flag, it's going to play the audio from there before I start recording. So if I put it right here and I hit record, notice that it played it from the yellow flag and then punched in the recording at the desired location. And then because we're in punch mode, I secretly captured what was playing in the background, which is great. The easiest way to trigger your pre-roll and one of my favorite things is all you have to do is hold the option key and click anywhere you want on the timeline. And notice now my yellow flag pre-roll is moving around with it. So this is so incredibly easy to set up a pre-roll point. You could set where you want to record, go option click, and it's that simple. So pre-roll is incredibly important because you need to play back audio before they start recording so they can get into the take and know where they are in time. Now post-roll, is almost the same thing, but it's a little different. So if we turn that on, you're gonna notice there's a yellow flag after the insertion marker. Now you might expect it to stop at that marker, but it's not that simple. Notice that it didn't stop at the post roll marker. So post roll is only active when you make a selection. So now that I made my selection point of where I wanna punch in, Now notice that it stopped at the post roll marker. So post roll will only work when you make a selection. Now a lot of the times, I like to have my post roll at a very high value, something like 100. Just because, let's say I talk with a client 
and I tell them, hey, let's just punch in this one part here, but they decide to keep going. Well, because I'm in punch and recording, even though I think we're done, while it's playing back, it's still secretly capturing the take. So to demonstrate. All right, so now we're punching in the audio, punching in the audio. And now let's say maybe I want to keep going and keep going, keep going. Now notice I only made the recording at that selection point, but because I was in punch recording and I had the post roll marker set so far ahead, while I was playing it after the insertion point, it was still capturing all that audio. Very, very, very useful. So with punch and recording, pre-roll and post-roll, this is gonna ensure that you have a seamless recording session and everything is captured properly.